The sun hung warm and welcoming over Cairo. The public park buzzed with energy. Children's delighted shrieks blended with the call of vendors selling roasted corn and fresh juices. Every corner seemed to pulse with life, families and friends gathering under the shade of tall palms and flowering trees. Nadia spread out a patterned blanket on a grassy patch, her eyes frequently darting towards Aisha, her special needs daughter who was enthusiastically playing with her toy plane, making it fly around her. The love in Nadia's eyes was evident. For her, Aisha wasn't just a child. She was a symbol of resilience, strength, and pure joy. As they settled down, enjoying the delicious sandwiches Nadia had packed, a shadow briefly cast over them. Khalid, a man dressed sharply in a navy business suit, eyed Aisha with evident distaste. Such children shouldn't be brought to public places, he commented audibly, nose wrinkled as if he'd smelled something unpleasant. Nadia's head shot up, her warm brown eyes now stormy. Excuse me? she asked, her voice dripping with disbelief. Khalid glanced at her, his expression unapologetic. You heard me. Drawing in a deep breath, Nadia stood up, facing the man squarely. My daughter has every right to be here, just like any other child. Who are you to say otherwise? He scoffed, rolling his eyes dramatically. People like you never understand, he drawled, looking down at his polished shoes. You just drag everyone else into your misery. Nadia felt a stinging sensation behind her eyes, but willed herself not to show weakness in front of this stranger. You know nothing about our life, or the happiness my daughter brings to me. Your ignorance is astounding. With a smirk, Khalid adjusted his tie. I don't have time for this, he said dismissively, before walking away with an exaggerated air of self-importance. A few onlookers, having witnessed the scene, whispered among themselves, their faces a mixture of sympathy for Nadia and disdain for Khalid. Gathering Aisha into her arms, Nadia whispered comforting words into her daughter's ear. The incident, though brief, had cast a shadow on their day. Little did Nadia know, however, that this wouldn't be the last she'd hear of Khalid. In the dimmed lighting of the community center, Nadia took a moment to glance around. Faces of neighbors, friends, and local business owners stared back. The room held a stillness, everyone's attention wrapped on the evening's matters. Taking a deep breath, Nadia approached the small podium. Good evening, everyone, she began, her voice quivering just slightly. I wanted to share something that happened today in the park. The room remained silent, save for the gentle hum of the ceiling fans overhead. My daughter, Aisha, as many of you know, is special. Nadia continued, pausing momentarily to collect herself. She's the light of my life. But today, a man thought it was appropriate to voice his distaste about her presence in the park. Whispers spread through the crowd. Outraged murmurs. Empathetic sighs. Nadia shook her head, feeling the weight of their collective empathy. It's not about my anger or hurt feelings. It's about a mindset that needs changing. Every child, irrespective of their abilities, should be welcomed with open arms, without judgment. From the back, Hana, a close friend of Nadia's, stood up. Do you know who this man was? She questioned, her gaze piercing. I didn't catch his name, Nadia replied. But I would recognize him anywhere. Hana strode forward, pulling her phone from her pocket. She quickly scrolled through something before turning the screen to Nadia. Was it him? She asked. The face staring back was unmistakably Khalid. Nadia nodded, trying to contain her surprise. Yes, that's him. Hana sighed deeply. I thought so. That's Khalid. He's a director at one of Cairo's leading companies. I've met him a few times at corporate events. The room was thick with tension. Many attendees were professionals who had interactions with his company. The realization that a person in such a high-ranking position harbored such prejudices was unsettling. Nadia took a moment to process this information. It's not about revenge, she murmured, more to herself than anyone else. It's about educating people like him. Hana placed a comforting hand on Nadia's shoulder. Maybe, she whispered, her gaze steady. But sometimes life has a way of teaching its lessons. And as the night deepened, plans were set in motion, the cogs of karma starting to turn. The community was united, and Khalid would soon realize that his words held consequences ones that even his esteemed position couldn't shield him from. The shimmering skyline of Cairo stood witness to a new dawn.
In the midst of this bustling city, a storm was brewing, not of sand, but of public opinion. Nadia had woken up to hundreds of notifications on her phone. Her friend, Hana, had uploaded a clip of her heartfelt speech to a local community group on Facebook. The video had snowballed overnight, shared and reshared until it became a trending topic. As she scrolled through her feed, she saw various comments from strangers, offering words of support, sharing their personal stories, and condemning the man's actions. Popular influencers and bloggers had amplified the incident, with some openly asking the identity of the man behind the cruel remarks. At his office, Khalid had no inkling of the storm outside. He walked through the glass doors confidently, his polished shoes echoing through the atrium. But today was different. He felt it as soon as he stepped into the elevator, the hushed whispers, the averted eyes. Fatima, a junior executive and an advocate for inclusivity, had stumbled upon the video early that morning. Recognizing Khalid immediately, she had shared it on the office WhatsApp group with the simple caption, Is this who we are now? Khalid walked into a meeting room where a few of his colleagues were gathered. They looked up, their expressions a mix of pity and distaste. Have you seen this? Fatima asked, holding up her phone. Watching himself become the villain in Nadia's story, Khalid felt his face burn with embarrassment. Is this true, Khalid? Ibrahim, a senior executive, asked, his tone cold. Khalid hesitated, then nodded. I said those things, he admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. But this is getting blown out of proportion. Fatima raised an eyebrow. Blown out of proportion? A mother was just trying to enjoy a day with her daughter, and you shamed her. I didn't mean to, Khalid protested, trying to defend his actions. I was having a bad day. The room was silent, the weight of judgment pressing down on Khalid. Ibrahim cleared his throat. Your personal issues are not an excuse for your behavior, Khalid. The company can't afford to be associated with this kind of controversy. Outside the confines of the office, the digital realm was ablaze. The call to name and shame Khalid grew louder by the minute. The power of social media was undeniable. As the video clip spread like wildfire, Khalid's previous life of privilege and respect teetered on the brink of collapse. Nadia, watching the events unfold from her home, felt a whirlwind of emotions. She hadn't anticipated such a reaction, but she wasn't about to step in to shield him. This was the bed Khalid had made for himself, and now he had to lie in it. The sunlit atrium of the company's headquarters buzzed with hushed conversations. The towering building, emblematic of power and success, was abuzz with rumors. Khalid, once a proud figure walking its corridors, was now the epicenter of whispers and subtle finger-pointing. Nadia's story had reached the top of the corporate ladder. Mrs. Fatima, the CEO of the company, sat in her expansive office, staring out of the window, her eyes reflecting a storm. A woman in her late fifties, she had built the company from the ground up, making sure her workforce knew the value of ethics and respect. Having a special needs nephew, the video struck close to home. She felt a personal affront. A knock on her door announced Khalid's presence. He stepped inside, nervously adjusting his tie. The grandeur of the room, which usually comforted him, now seemed stifling. Sit, Mrs. Fatima commanded, her voice icy. Khalid obeyed, swallowing hard. Mrs. Fatima, I... She raised a hand, stopping him mid-sentence. I watched the video, Khalid. Do you have any idea of the embarrassment you've brought to this company? I apologize, Mrs. Fatima. It was a lapse in judgment. She snorted. A lapse. You belittled a child and her mother in public. That's not just a lapse, it's a revelation of character. Khalid looked down, unable to meet her gaze. I deeply regret it. Regret is easy, Mrs. Fatima retorted. But actions have consequences. This company stands on principles. Respect and empathy are not optional values here. I understand, Khalid said, feeling a weight on his chest. I am ready to face any reprimand. Mrs. Fatima shuffled some papers and then slid a document across her desk. Khalid's eyes widened as he read the words, Termination Notice. This is your consequence, Khalid. Your services are no longer required. But, Mrs. Fatima, Khalid protested, this is my life's work, she leaned forward. Your life's work is tainted by your lack of humanity. We need leaders, not tyrants. I suggest you use this time to introspect. 
As Khalid stumbled out of the room, he realized his world had crumbled. The whispers grew louder, and the weight of his choices pressed down on him. Meanwhile, behind the closed doors of her office, Mrs. Fatima took a deep breath reassuring herself that she had made the right decision for her company and her conscience. The sun painted golden streaks across the sky, casting a warm hue over Cairo's most loved park. The previous days had seen a storm of events, and the park was the epicenter. Today, it felt different, serene. Perhaps it was the universe's way of saying that after every storm, there is a calm. Nadia and Aisha sat on their regular spot, the soft grass tickling their feet. They shared a sandwich, and Aisha giggled as a butterfly landed on her nose. In the distance, Nadia noticed a tall, graceful woman walking towards them. It took her a moment to recognize her from the TV interviews, Mrs. Fatima. Mrs. Fatima, Nadia exclaimed, standing up in surprise. The older woman smiled warmly. Please sit. I hope I'm not intruding. Of course not, Nadia replied, still in mild shock. They settled down with Aisha curiously looking between the two. I watched your talk at the community center, Mrs. Fatima began. Your strength and resilience, the love for your daughter, it's inspiring. Nadia blushed. Thank you. I just wanted to make a difference. You have, Nadia, Mrs. Fatima continued, her voice softening. You see, my younger son had special needs too. Your words, they reminded me of the battles we faced together. Nadia looked into Mrs. Fatima's eyes, seeing the depth of her journey. I'm so sorry for whatever you had to go through, the CEO smiled. It made us stronger, and that's why I'm here. Your message needs a larger platform, Nadia. Nadia blinked. I don't understand. Mrs. Fatima leaned in. Our company has been running corporate social responsibility programs, but we lack a genuine voice. I'd like to offer you a position to champion inclusivity and acceptance. Nadia was speechless. You'd be making a real difference, Mrs. Fatima added. Think about it. Over the next few days, Nadia pondered the offer. The opportunity was immense, but she had Aisha to think about. However, the prospect of forging a brighter, more inclusive future was tempting. Finally, in the heart of their home, surrounded by memories and dreams, Nadia made her choice. She would take the job. She would amplify her voice and become a beacon for countless others. The story concludes with Nadia and Aisha, sitting in their living room, bathed in the evening's golden glow. The room echoed with laughter and hope. The duo, the unbreakable team, had faced adversity and emerged stronger. They were the embodiment of resilience, showing the world that love could conquer hate and hope could arise from the darkest of times.